Let's crack open a beer and share some thoughts. Welcome to another Opinions on Films, the uh, podcast in which we drink beer and watch films, basically. So what film we got, Steve? This time round, we are, uh, and thanks to our listeners for, for choosing this for yeah, us. they voted it in. Absolutely, from the poll uh, following the first version of this that we did. But we are watching, um, to give it its full title, I suppose, it's Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, yes, isn't it? that is the full title. That, that is the film. And, and this time round, we've got um, uh, a different supporter. For, for this show so yeah. uh, originally we were doing these shows with Hippo Beers and it was sad to hear that um, Hippo Beers recently went into receivership so uh, left us in a bit of a hole in, in terms of having some beers for this particular show and thankfully Beer Merchants stepped in to help us out and um, we found out that they're probably bigger beer geek, uh, film geeks than we are well, definitely judging by the pictures. Uh, judging by the pictures and, and the beers that they yeah. put together for us um, for this particular episode. And um, we've decided to do things slightly differently as well, haven't we, this time? We because have. Uh, rather than having to uh, try and pair the beers with various scenes and sections of the film, we thought we'd do a bit of a beer lotto. Yeah. So we've got eight beers from Beer Merchants. Uh, there's One of them is a, is a big beer. That's not part of the beer lotto. That will be the We're closing. We're going to do that at the end. That's our outlier, That's isn't it? That's the closing yeah. scenes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's seven beers. I've numbered seven beers, a bit randomly. And so Steve is going to pick a number between one and seven. And the first beer is Steve. But this is going to be fun as it goes on, trying to remember what numbers well, I have. I will try and cross picked. it out on a bit of paper okay. if I remember. Um, let's start with number three. Number, number three, three is going to be our first beer. Okay, so if I look at the list we got from them, number three is a flying dog snake. Now, obviously, <laughs> it will become very apparent during the film why this beer was chosen by beer merchants. I, I think let's put it out there now. Um, spoilers throughout the film, but surely if somebody's listening to this by now they've hopefully already seen well, Raiders hopefully, of the Lost Ark. Well, someone Back to the Future. That, that, that's true, but there's, um, yes, yeah, beer merchants have done a great job in, in choosing some of the beers. Ideally, this beer might have come a bit later on, but this, this will be our first beer. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the fridge. As the opening credits roll, you have Steve. Oh, just, just me on my own talking about the film. Which was the first, possibly one of the first films as well to have actually um, gone from the uh, studio logo into a real life image as, as well. So um, opened on the Columbia Studios mountain and then we've got this strange adventurer character looking at the same mountain. See, I hadn't picked up on that before. Have we just found our six minute moment? Yeah, but also, second geek fact the first person we actually see on screen appears in one of the Spider Man films. Ah, okay. So, so Alfred Molina was the first face we saw, and he appears as Dr. Octopus in the second Tobey Maguire iteration of the Spider Man franchise. So that, that's keeping our geek burning. Surely we have a geek quota. I'm sure we do, yeah. We're, we're ticking off all the geek options here so first beer up is flying dog flying, so snake flying dog, dog IPA, IPA. so fly, yeah flying dog yeah. snake dog IPA India pale ale and this is a 7.1% beer to start off with. great place to start yeah great place to start so well chosen Steve in fact you could have used this in the second film really couldn't you probably yeah as an India pale ale yeah. for Temple of Doom so, so far, we still haven't seen Indy, have we? We haven't. We're just seeing this this character. Mostly seeing the back of him. So, did you see this at the cinema? I did, yes. See, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't see any of the indie films at the cinema until number four. I, I saw all three of the original films at the cinema. And, yeah, just uh, epic, I, I think the word was, back in the day. But just this opening scene, is it, it's just building the tension... It sets it up, doesn't it? And it's a good few minutes before anybody even says a word, isn't yeah. it? <clears throat> 
So there's a hint of a bit of poison in, in a dart. Yep. So I can never remember. These are set 1930s, aren't they, really? 1936. Oh, South American... <laughs> I've the perfect timing. <laughs> there South you go. America, That almost answered your question. Um, so what do you think about beer that, that, that we've got? Actually, I was just about to smash it, to be honest. Okay. It's delicious, isn't it? I mean, on the nose, it's got kind of that caramel, sort of toffee, piney nose to it. I haven't got much of the toffee, I have to admit. A slight sweetness. Oh, the first sign of the whip. And, and now we've got Sour Adventurer. It's Han Solo. It is indeed. It's Han Solo. Who's the Han Solo in a, in a Western hat? Now, there is this popular theory in in like the uber geek world that Indiana Jones and Star Wars exist in the same universe, and that actually he is the same character. What? It, that, that, Where does that come from? Dig into it on on the internet on 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 the you know that World Wide Web. That there are some proper full-on geek theories that it's essentially Star Wars is set in the future and there was a scenario where Han Solo crashed, landed to Earth, went back in time and became Indiana Jones. Brilliant. I love that. So would that explain his scar? He, he whipped it in his face well, himself. I, I'm not sure about that because you don't, you don't get the scar explained until episode three of this, do you? Uh, that's true. And, and, until the third film. But going back to the beer. Yes. Sorry, we, we got a bit distracted. Yes. Once again, that might by happen. the film. That it's might get, happen. I, I think, <laughs> disclaimer, it's going to happen quite a lot. <laughs> I'm loving it. It's got a nice fruity punch, but it's still got that dry bitter as well. And it's 7.1%. 7. It's so so well balanced for 7.1%. It's, it's very drinkable for 7.1%, yeah. isn't it? It's... I mean, you can spot the 7.1% because it's nicely labelled on the bottle, but if someone just passed me a, a half or two thirds of this, yeah, I would session it. I don't, don't like. Right, I don't, oh, you like, don't like spiders. spiders. Sorry, so, Steve just pulled his saison face. So that scene, no, that's this is this is a whole different face. This is like the spider face. Oh my word, he's covered in them. I mean, all throughout all of these films, mm. this one on, you have lots of creepy crawlies and yeah. vermin, don't you? Yeah. And I'm not. I haven't really got a favour at any of them. I wouldn't want any of them crawling on me. I wouldn't. I'll be honest with you. Uh, and we'll talk about it a bit later on in, in the now classic scene with the snakes. Yes. So basically he's now going through the tunnel trying to go past all of the obstacles in his way. He's working out all the traps because he is a, a, a an explorer. Yeah. But he's also um, steeped in the occult, isn't he? Yes. So he understands. Without believing on. it. Yep. Yeah. Now, it's quite strange. So, Indy's in his trademark hat, leather jacket, shirt, man bag. Alfred Molina, all his clothes are basically ripped to shreds. Yeah. So, so Indy's had quite a, a nice journey through the jungle so far. But whereas he's guide, not so much. No. So no, no. No, don't just walk forward. There's another trap. There's at least one more trap. Well, two maybe. Fool. I mean, just this opening sequence is just amazing, isn't it? It's just this this defined almost the whole genre of films yeah. from this point on and it had had you captured from the start well yeah because straight away you're into an adventure it's every every boy's dream isn't it to it's be a, this adventurer yeah So this is where he's he's trying to get the gold idol, isn't it? Yeah. So he's got his bag of sand he's picked up earlier. 
Now again, was it Mission Impossible that had something similar to this? Where he's coming down on the rope and he's trying to Back take the out. item without setting anything off. And this was how many years before that? At least 15. Yeah. Well, again, it's just a film that spawned a whole load of imitations mm. as, a, as, as a result of it. However, oh. despite his best efforts... It's going to run now. Yep. All the arrows, Running all the Running back through all the traps. Yep. Or double crossing. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because at this point, all we as the viewer know is that this man is a he's an explorer. Yeah. We 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 later go to find out that he's an archaeologist as well and uh, a, a teacher. At the moment, I'd almost go to say he's just an adventurer. Yeah. But when when you look back on it from knowing what you know about Indiana. There are a lot of people saying that he can't be a true archaeologist because he's essentially he's gone into this tunnel and rather than preserving the items that he's found throughout it, he's just destroyed everything for the gold idol. Yeah, he's focused on one particular thing. Yeah. And he's just left his mate behind. Who, who got... It's completely anti spite after he double-crossed him. Forgot about all the traps on the way out. Wasn't this used for a tra- this scene for a cho- uh, chocolate orange Yes. Advert. Yeah. So this is the, the the rolling ball, isn't it? The boulder. I'm sure it was. Yeah, there were a lot of um, scenes that cameoed that. Yes. And, and repeated it. So basically, Indy's the only one still standing. Yeah. This is where we meet Indy's rival as well, isn't it? Yeah. This time it will cost you. So you could say that he's the smarter one. Absolutely, really? Yeah. He let Indy get get the idol and just nabs him at the end. Yeah. Just, just to pick up the treasure. Yeah. If that's all you're after. So neither of them are really archaeologists, are they? No. Indy's an adventurer who thinks certain things should be in museums. Whereas the other guy Balok, Balok, Balok. Yeah, just wants the glory. Yeah, for Indy, it's not a glory thing. Yep. And and now we're coming to one of those absolute iconic scenes, as as far as I'm yep. concerned, where he, he comes out of the, the the jungle and he's legging it across the field, being chased by this tribe. Yeah. So he's basically been chased by a tribe of natives. There's a biplane. Is it a biplane? Yeah. Waiting on the water. Here we go. Look. Got all the dust coming off him as he's running across the field. Start the engine, start the engine. See, that's a brilliant scene. The whole vista behind him as well, isn't it? So it gives you a feel for where they are. Yeah. I mean, you were told at the beginning it's South America. But you could have been anywhere. Yeah. But you had a bit more of a vista, a bit more mountainous, lush, lush greenery, a bit jungle. Oh. He almost tried to become Tarzan there. Yeah. I do love it that he almost failed in that. Yeah. And it's the first time we said this last time as well, didn't we, about the score on on the film. It's the first time where you're beginning to hear the classic tune. Yeah. So it's almost like Bond films where the Bond theme tune comes in at yeah. certain times. They're just teasing it a little bit. Just to remind you, yeah. it's there. Oh, there's a snake. Oh, no. Pet snake. It, it's a good job we find out really early on that he hates snakes, yeah. isn't it? Because I, I don't know whether that's going to have a part to play later on in this film. Yeah, as if anyone knew. Yeah. Talking of which... 
It's almost I, gone. I'm almost at the end of my Snake Dog IPA. Um, incredibly drinkable. So smooth. Yeah. So this is this this is. Oh, I want to go to America and taste American beers fresh. And this for me, it feels like it's very close to it. I think it's very close to fresh as well. The what's the uh, the best before on it? Uh, May 18. So let's assume they've put a year on that. Yeah, we're recording this start of August. That's not too bad That's at all, is it? Not too bad at all, is it? No. So here we have. This is probably one of the first times I saw a clean shaven. I was going to say Han Solo for a minute, but he's got a real name as well, hasn't he? Harrison Ford. Harrison yeah. Ford. Um, the whole stub was gone. It, it has because he's. We're now into the lecturer. Yeah. That that is Indiana Jones. He's all professor like now. Yeah. Glasses are on. Home ke- ke- hair is combed back. Yep. Yeah. So, so as the viewer, the first time you're watching this, you've, you've this sudden realization that hang on a minute, this is the guy that was just yeah adventuring in South America. Ten minutes in. Yeah. So we've got two characters almost. For yeah, absolutely. But. Let, let's just go back to the opening scene for a moment and, and, and think about all the films that, that you've watched over time. Can you think of a more iconic opening than, than that scene to a film? There's not many, but it sets it up in such a good way because you get the whole adventure, spirit of adventure, the whole idea of what's going on. Basically, you've nailed the character in three minutes. Yeah. Essentially, Absolutely, yeah. And now he's t- he's talking to uh, the the head of the university, who's played by Denholm Elliot, who's been another one of my favourite films, Trading Places. Okay, he's the uh, butler, isn't he, for Dan Aykroyd's character? Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. I think he's also in um, oh, Arthur. Is it Arthur? So who are these strange people who've turned up now? Uh, they're talking to him about his pedigree, though, aren't they? Yeah. In, in terms of so basically they're buttering him up. Yeah, they want something, don't they? Yeah. Oh, I wonder what that falling out was about. So he hasn't spoken to him for 10 years because they had a falling out. Okay. We'll part that for a moment. Yeah. Let's just put that one over there. Just leave it there for a second. Yeah. There's a lot of bow tie action going on in this. That there is, isn't there? Bow ties, so it's very ties. Bow tie heavy. Waistcoats. Oh, Nazis. Mm. Nazis have just suddenly appeared in the film. We're set late. Late 30s, did we establish? Yeah, 1936, so Berlin Games had already happened, or yeah. were about to happen. So, Nazis were a thing, they wouldn't have just thrown them in there, yeah. would they? Okay, so we're, we're essentially setting out what this film's about now, yes. aren't we? So there you go. Straight away he said, if you believe in that sort of thing. Yeah, so he's, he's laying it out, but there's a caveat yeah. to it. He's, a, he, he's all about the facts. Yeah. Not the bit you can't prove. Now, interestingly, do you not think, and this is going off on a bit of a tangent, the the recent series of um, the Dan Brown books that were converted into films... Similar. Would Harrison Ford not have been perfect for that lead role over Tom Hanks? Yeah, but... Had it not been too similar to, to Indiana Jones? Yeah, but wasn't Tom Hanks supposed to be more of a... 
he was a reluctant adventurer. But Harrison, it, Harrison Ford's character is not a reluctant adventurer. Do you not think? No, because if you think about, spoiler alert, go for, fast forward to the third of the three films, The Last Crusade, he was adventuring as a kid, wasn't he? When he did the Scouts thing. He, he was, yeah. So yeah. he's not a reluctant adventurer. But also in that film, hadn't he... For all intents and purposes, he had given up adventuring and he was only brought back into it because his dad got involved and then they essentially held his dad to ransom. Yeah, but as a teenager, he was adventuring. Yeah. So I think the Dan Aykroyd, those books and films were much more about less about the facts. Yeah. Having watched, I, I've only watched one of those, to be fair. Do we need to explain chalk and blackboards to anyone? I'm, I'm hoping anybody that's actually watched the film would know what a chalk and blackboard yeah. are. So, but he's, he's essentially just laying out the rest of the film right now. Yeah. You, don't, you don't know that at this point as a first time viewer. No. But you get to the end of it and you can come back to this point and say, yeah, okay, right, you've just set out the entire film. And that book doesn't half look like the... Um the Book of Monsters and Harry Potter. There's lots of Harry Potter suggestions sure, in this, isn't there? I'm sure Ravenwood is one of their forms. Ravenwood and also um, Slytherin. Yeah. There's there's a moment later on where he falls into the... But Ravenwood, I wasn't snakes. sure about but Ravenwood. Yeah. I'm sure there's, that's one of the houses. There's, there's, there's lots... Ravenclaw. Raven... So close. Yeah. But there's lots of suggestions that um, J.K. Rowling drew a lot of her inspiration from this film for, for naming things. There's worse films to draw inspiration well, from. Well, there, there are. In fact, yeah. that's almost uh, notched up Harry Potter for me a little bit further. <laughs> but it's got, it's got Raiders of the Lost Ark influences. Yeah. Give, it, give it another 15 years and we might cover Harry Potter. It'll be, <laughs> the whole series. It, it'll be cult worthy It'll be retro. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Although Harry Potter as a book is 20 years old now. No. Yeah. The first book. Did you not know that? No, yeah, get out. Yeah, the first Harry Potter book is 20 years old. I'm not having that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, there I'm you go. not having that at all. Okay, while you're pondering that, you got to choose another beer. Choose another beer, Steve. So you've done beer and number three has gone. Seven. So we're going to go in number seven. Okay, number seven is L- Lervig Hazy Days, just because it's an amazing film beer. Okay, so I'm going to go to the fridge. Are you going to leave me to talk on my own about the film again? Yeah, I'll shout for the fridge though. So, so what we're now seeing, okay, so uh, Indiana is now packing his suitcase for a trip. And small suitcase. It's a small suitcase, but we've he's we've very definitely seen him put his whip in there. So it could be another adventure that he's going on. I wonder, can you take a whip through customs these days? Is that a hand? I I imagine so. What what, what do you think? Superstitious hocus pocus. Oh, he's got a gun. Well, you certainly, certainly can't, can't take pack a, a gun these can't days. Pack a gun in your suitcase. Pan American. Pan American floating yeah. plane. I'd love to go on a floating plane. I would. A there plane are... that takes off from water. Yeah, they're a thing I'd love of, to of do their that. time, aren't they? And he's, he's obviously on first class because he's gone upstairs. And he's been offered some sort of cocktail. Oh, someone suspiciously looking behind the magazine at him. Right, so it's a, it's a beer called Hazy Days, Steve. Okay. It's a little bit murky. So, Lervig Hazy Days is a 4.7 beer. It's a... Go- can, I, can I just jump in? I, I love this scene. Oh. The map. Where it's plotting the course of the plane yeah. 
across the old map. Which this journey would have taken a long time. It, yeah, this this wasn't an overnighter. No. Like in, in, in the 1930s, no. So, so they're now in Nepal. Also, Nepal, even these days, is one of the hardest places to land a plane. Really? Yeah, because me and Michael watch uh, Air Crash Investigators. And uh, there was one where it's a really nightmare place to land. Wow. Just a little known fact. More facts. All full of the facts. More facts. Hazy Daisy is a double dry hopped American pale ale made to suit the hop lover's needs. Now we're both hop lover's needs, so... Uh, we are. Before I get into the uh, second sentence... Cheers. Cheers. Quite possibly the crowd in the film's reaction to us drinking this beer yeah. right there. Perfect. Uh, we didn't hold back on this one. If you don't like hops, this beer is better left on the shelf. Although well, they appear to have spelled beer the second time around with one A. Okay. I don't know if that's deliberate or not. Burr. Burr. Maybe you can't be asked to say the whole word. Okay, so it's a hazy beer. Is that fair? Or... I think we can go a little bit further than oh, hazy, can't come we? On, Steve, come oh, on, Steve. Oh, come on. Let's be honest. I'm holding that up to the window. Are we saying murky? For me, if it's hazy, you can still see through it. That's... I can't see through that. That's murky. Okay, well, let's, let's, come, let's come back to that. So this is, this is our first scene... With, well, we don't know who she is. We yet. don't know who this female character is that's just been introduced. No, that's a great way of introducing. Yeah. So we've just seen the silhouette of Indy with his hat on. She doesn't look overly pleased to see him. She's she's far from pleased to see him. Yeah. Walking back through my door, there's a euphemism. <laughs> oh, no, oh, she just clocked him as well. That wasn't even a slap. No. I was a child, I was in love. It was wrong and you knew it. You knew what you were doing. Now I do. This is my place. Let's address the elephant in the room right now. <laughs> I, th I think we've got to, mate. Okay. O okay, so in the previous scene. We're yet to establish who this female is still. Yeah. But we will establish that she was... She's definitely younger than Indy. She's younger than Indy. And she is the daughter of... Professor Ravenwood. Who, in the previous scene, Indy said he hadn't spoken to him for ten years. Yeah. How old would you put Marion at as the, in this scene? She's in her twenties. Yeah. So... It's possible something went on when she was quite young. Yes. Isn't it? If you want to look into it that far. I prefer not to. And I'll be honest, when I first saw the film, this would never even have clocked it, me. It, she's quite angry over it still. So, has, has she held this grudge for ten years? Or has there, there, there been something be in that time? I reckon there's been nothing in that time. She's held the grudge for ten years. Wow, that's some burning grudge there, isn't it? Yeah. So what do you think of the beer? I'm enjoying it. I mean, you're enjoying it more than I am at the moment. <laughs> it's, I'm just because I'm just drinking, mate. Um, I'm struggling to get much of anything from it okay so if this was was up against another like-minded like presented beer do you think you would struggle to pick out the the nuances of it i, I think i would what what i'm getting is on the nose I, i'm getting what's becoming that now all too familiar Juicy, slightly savoury nose to it. 
on the flavour, there's no bitterness. None. Unlike, uh, unlike Marion with uh, uh, Indy. Yeah. Uh, at any stage of that beer, is there any bitterness for there's me? There's no bitterness. Um, it's fruity. A little bit of sweetness. And then it finishes fruity as well. It's just... Um, like say you can put this up against a number of beers that are presented in this way and maybe you would struggle to pick this out of a lineup. I think so. I would definitely be able to pick out the baddies out of a lineup in this film though. I think they're fairly obvious, aren't they? That's what I love about these kind of films. They're coded. Yeah. You know, this guy is dressed as a well I suppose a low, a low hair flick was dressed like him. <laughs> to be fair, there's a cultural reference if ever <laughs> I've heard one. Absolutely, yeah. I'm actually, I'm right, aren't I? You are. You are. Hair flick was based on him. What was he actually based? I don't on know, him? but the clothes definitely were. Yeah. But a low, a low definitely came after this. Yes, a low, a low was late eighties, mid to late eighties. The the clothes, the dress, the glasses, all the same. Not necessarily a German accent, but he's definitely got e- European East. Yeah. But you could probably, with the suggestions that have been made thus far, you just the go film, German. Yeah, he's a German. <laughs> so why, why all of a sudden is this German looking? Why is he turned up in the pool? And, and why is he trying to brand Marion? Yeah, with a uh, hot poker. Yeah. Oh. oh, who's turned up? Somebody with a whip. So now we get the first fight scene where lots of people fire and no one gets hit. And an awful amount of alcohol is wasted. Yeah. During oh, this he's just scene. thrown the whole table over. It's like watching an episode of the A-Team now. It's, it's brilliant though, isn't it? How no one ever got shot. Yeah. Or police squad. Yeah. Look, they're about five yards from each other. Yeah. And no one has hit anyone yet. Oh, hold on uh, a sec. I think, yeah. He just got a bullet in the head. And he was burning anyway. Yeah, so he was already on his way out. Yeah. Oh, is that a barrel of uh, what in his... Red Barrel on the end of it. Yeah, I don't think it was Watney's Red Barrel in 1936. <laughs> but I do like the way Marion took a swig before she uh, carried on fighting. There you classic, go, look. Some classic drinking going on in yeah. this scene. That, was like, that did look like a bottle of JD almost, didn't it? It did, yeah. Don't know whether it was. That there, JD. Yeah. Is that our first product placement? I think it might be, but that even is, that's even before time, isn't it? No, JD's been around since the 1800s. Oh, okay. So it's not unlikely to be in there, but product placement is a little less overt in this film. Yeah. Aren't we about to get our first really bad special effects scene here? Yeah. He's just picked up a, an amulet of some sort. Yeah, which is obviously metal. It's been in the fire. Yeah. And he's burnt his hand. And his hand went really red, didn't it? Yep, and now he's gone running out into the snow. Yep. And he's got a bit of his hand in the snow. Job done. Basically, Indy's turned up and the barn's been destroyed. Yeah. There seems to be a theme running around Indy here, isn't yeah. there? That wherever he goes, he ends up destroying shit. Yes. Oh, so back on the plane again. Or on a different plane. Yep, and we're going across the map. Again, which brilliant segue. Yep, Nepal, Karachi, through Iran, to Baghdad. Uh, oh, and uh, where are we going to now? 
to Cairo. Of course. Now, he's been in lots of films, hasn't he? He's been in an amazing amount of films, hasn't he? Yeah. He was in The Living Daylights. Timothy Dalton's first yeah. outing in Bond. And you could probably suggest that Indy's still wearing the same clothes. He is wearing the same clothes. That little bit there, he did look very hand solo with that smile. Yeah. Well, when you saw this at the cinema, did you see Han Solo? No, I or didn't. Or did you see the I, separate character? I was a child. It was This was Indiana Jones. He was this great adventuring explorer. And he's, he's still relatively young in this as well, isn't he? Yeah. Because he was the oldest of the Star Wars main characters, yeah. wasn't he? And he'd already made American Graffiti before this. So it's quite a globe-trotting film, really, isn't it? Very much so. It goes all over the place. Yeah. Wasn't this one of the things they were looking to do, was make a like a, a B-movie version of a Bond film, which Bond films typically go across the world, don't they? I, th I think so, yeah. They were, th th well, I don't think it was a B-movie version. I think it was like a Bond film for a different generation, but set in a different period in time. Yeah. So obviously they took it back to the 30s, 40s for sequels as well so speaking of 1930s forward how does, it, how does this film feel age wise now I'm I don't think it's really aged no but is that partly because is it was already set in the past when they made it I think so I, I don't uh, yeah so it's not a film of its age because it wasn't made in its age no because they very much set it this is when it was yeah this is when this happened So maybe that's one of the reasons why things like um, one of my favourite comedies is Blackadder. Yeah. Blackadder's always set in the past. It's never of its time. So take 40 Towers. 40 Towers, bit of a tangent to the film we're watching, but it's set in a very particular period of time, isn't it? It's set in the 70s. It is, Looks yeah. in the 70s. Still a classic, but it's, it's definitely time-stamped. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Whereas this not so much. Yeah. It's a bit like watching Poirot. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are a few odd moments of some dodgy special effects that go on in this film. Agreed. But that Again, that's a product of its time. Agreed. But you, you look at the story and the, the concepts going on around the story, and it doesn't feel like it's aged at all. Tell you what, I don't trust that fucking monkey. I don't trust that monkey. Never trust anybody with an eye patch either. No. Unless it's Nick Fury. Although we no. still don't know if we can trust Nick Do Fury. Do we trust Nick Fury? No. Oh, I'm not sure. Captain well, America doesn't. Mm, yeah. But you can't really trust Captain America these days either. Ooh. Because he's gone off my Oh, see, I was still Team Cap. Oh, no, Team Iron Man. Yeah, Michelle asked me the other day, am I, am I Team Cap or Team... I said, no, Team Cap. He's, surely he's not Captain America anymore because he left his shield at the end of Civil War. He's still Captain America. Yeah, but he's left his shield. The shield represents shield. No. Nah. You're still a captain. I disagree. I think he's just Steve Rogers now. Oh, well, let's come back to that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Because otherwise that would take the whole of this film out. <laughs> yeah. We, we, <laughs> we could just completely lose the rest of Indiana Jones right now just talking about Captain America. <laughs> Uh, another little hint there. Yeah. Didn't take much to alienate the father, just the daughter. Well, of course, you can alienate any daughter's father if you upset the daughter. Absolutely. We've, and we've now got a bit of a classic fight scene now, haven't yeah. we? So there's a, a whole load of uh, bandits, natives, are decided they're going to take on Indy. Yep. With a variety of weapons and fruit stalls. Oh, and there's the whip again. Never had a whip been more cooler than when yeah. this film came out. It comes into brilliant use in the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark Lego game. Oh, okay. Because you can start swinging about everything with the whip. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. Oh, 
She's got a frying pan. Marion's we'll, got a frying pan. We'll, we'll come back to uh, game times later on because okay. I've got one a little bit later on that I want to want to chat about. Oh, Marion and the frying pan won. Yep. Okay, so while we're still running around the uh, streets of Cairo, okay, and Marion's hiding around, so. So we've had uh, beer number three, and we've had uh, beer number seven, Steve. Are we doing final thoughts on, on, on number seven? Um, I. It's easy to drink. It's a fruity beer. If it was um, another 3%, I wouldn't notice the difference. It's, it's still not what I look for in a beer. No. I can understand there are a lot of people that love that sort of thing. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine, but it's not for me. I don't need it to dominate my beer scene. No, absolutely not. Let's go for number one next, then. Oh. This is the... Sorry, I'm going to have to pause. Yeah, we need to pause because the iconic scene of this film yeah. has, has just started. Just... Brilliant. <laughs> so, so what we just got there was a sword-wheeling big enemy... Which uh, Indy just couldn't be bothered with, so he shot him. Yeah. Now, there's some background to that scene, which you was about to go into, it, wasn't there? Yeah. Because you know this as well. Yeah, and I was amazed when I heard the background about this one. Go on, go for it, mate. So basically, this guy with a sword had trained for four to six months for this whole scene. It was going to be one of the set piece scenes, wasn't it? Yeah. And. They didn't film this in Cairo, did they? They filmed it in Tunisia. Which must be a bit of a George Lucas haunt. Maybe he's yeah, bought... Yeah, yeah. Maybe he's bought Tunisia. Maybe he's got a yeah, segment of Tunisia. No, uh, no, Tunisia. The whole of it, yeah. The whole of Tunisia. And um, apparently everyone apart from George Lucas got dysentery. Yes. So he couldn't film for more than about five, ten minutes before everyone had to rush off to the loo. And someone just said, look, shall we just... Cut to the chase. I think it was Harrison Ford that actually yeah. said, look, I'm just going to shoot him. Yeah. Basically, I need to be out of this scene as quickly as possible when they shot him. So this guy had trained for ages for this set piece and was in the film for about 10 seconds. <laughs> for, for Harrison Ford just to shoot him dead. However, it's still an iconic scene. In fact, it's probably more iconic. It is. And again, it's one of those scenes that a lot of films have tried to replicate. Yeah. In some shape or form, haven't yeah. they? Yeah. You have the whole bit going on, and then the good guy just goes, I can't be honest with I this. I can't be doing this, yeah. I'm gonna... It's either a punch or a shot. Where's Marion? Well. Was she in the burning car? I think I think she might. I'd... Is she dead? I don't think she's dead. But we're at this point, we're led to believe that she may have perished in the burning car. So Indy's just drinking. With the monkey. Speaking of drinking, I'm going to go and get the next beer. So, so Yeah, so what was number one? Uh, number one was the Handvex of Volvia, which just says, very German. I think we need a German beer at about German this beer. point in the film. Because we are moving towards that point where it all gets a little bit German. We're going Germanic. Germanic. That's a good word, isn't it? Is, is that an actual word? Germanic is a word, yes. It's a word. It's a word. Just checking. Oh, and Belloc's back. Don't trust Belloc. I wouldn't trust Belloc at all. What the hell is Belloc supposed to be? You know, I don't know. So it doesn't sound quite so German, does Search that one out. I'm going to hit up um, IMDB for this one, I reckon. So it doesn't taste quite so German, does it? No. Okay, well, I think I've got the right beer. Yeah, that's it. Swing top. Hmm, there wasn't a lot of fizz came out of that. No, it didn't pop. No. 
Right, his full name is Dr. René Belloc, so should we go for French or Belgian? Yeah, that's it. It doesn't quite... doesn't quite sound French, does it? No. René, there's another low low reference. Oh, yeah. Seems oh, though, René. It seems as though Lolo took a lot of references from this film. Which is not what you'd necessarily expect. No. There's a bit more life now poured in the bottle, in the glass, though. Please, is that a cold haze or is it? It's a cold haze. It's an well, it's an unfiltered lager. So blonde. This, to all intents and purposes, to me, look like almost when the bottle looks like a Munich Hells for me. Uh, definitely a product of Germany, which is you know good timing coming up from some German scenes. Other than that, I know nothing about this beer at all. And it's bold beer. I, I, I think we've maybe got a slightly different bottle to... Yeah, to the list. Yeah. So it says there's a Keller beer, which, remind, which is why it reminds me of Munich Hell, so... Yeah, you know, so this is number three of our, our, our beers on the random beer list. I haven't tasted it yet. What do you think, Steve? Quite easy to drink. Yeah? Yeah. Very easy. Yeah, this tastes like in Munich Hells. Yeah. To me. Actually, I just realised I'm not reclining. There you go. Why am I not reclining on my own sofa? Get yourself comfortable, mate. Still don't trust the monkey. Or the guy with the eye patch. It's got, it's got a bit of a look about it, isn't it, that yeah. monkey? Like it's going to fuck you over at the first opportunity. Were you surprised Harrison Ford was in this? No. As a child, I don't think I really understood actors and, and that they were paid to do different films. Oh, okay. And, and different things. So you didn't really pick up on it at all? No. I was just like, oh, it's, it's him. Yeah. I've seen um, him in St. Kells. Yeah. I think, jump, jump that forward to now, one of the issues that, that my kids are certainly having struggling with is is over the impending flash debut in in the dc universe i know where this is going that my my boys are completely bought into grant gustin being the flash barry allen uh, yeah grant gustin is barry allen and therefore he's the flash and all of a sudden you've got this different version yeah. of the flash in the cinematic universe and I just don't understand why they couldn't have used the same character or, or the same actor. I so really it, don't. Yeah, I, I, I do. Well, actually, I had the same struggle. I had the same struggle as your boys, to be fair. Um, and that, that might not change. I'm struggling to get... I don't know why they just couldn't pick another superhero character rather than just put the Flash in there. But they could have put the Flash in there, but used Grant Casting. Yeah, or just not use the Flash. Because for three years, I've bought into... Grant Gustin is the Flash. Yeah, same here. And, and I truly believe he's the Flash. And now you want me to believe that somebody else is the Flash? Yeah, can't do it. No, can't have that. Not at the same time. Yeah, no. Not at the same time. No, yeah. Like you say, move it to either or even not feature that character. Yeah. So talking about Harrison Ford. Yeah, yeah, sorry, let's get back to this film, yeah, shall so we? Yeah, so talking about Harrison Ford, like you say, obviously as a kid you didn't like pick up on it, but... Um, a bit like Back to the Future, he wasn't the first choice, was he? No, no, the first choice for this was actually Tom Selleck. And how hard is that to picture? I just, I can't see it. I mean, I love Tom Selleck. I mean, Magnum, I love Magnum. Free Men and a Baby I love. Yeah. And his recent series in the States, Blue Bloods, I love. Hang on, the monkey's dead. Well, that's good. And to be fair, everyone's had a bad day at times. <laughs> Have we ever? But and oh, and now we've jumped straight Whoa, into. Whoa! See that happens really quickly. Yeah, it goes from there to what is now a so, fairly important scene in this film. 
It's a dig site with lots of German soldiers. Yeah. yeah. In Egypt. So what were we talking about? Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck. So, yeah. Because I can only picture Tom Selleck as Magnum. I can only see him as that. So, and, and then consequently, a lot further forward as playing a, what's a fairly cameo role in Friends. Oh, as Monica's as, boyfriend. As Monica's boyfriend. Blimey, I mean, you're going back at least 10 years again now. Yeah, but... You can't now go. I, I can't now go back yeah. to seeing Tom Selleck as Magnum after seeing him in, in, in Friends. See, I see him in Blue Bloods now, where he's the police commissioner for New York. But he's still that kind of Magnum. Yeah, type but he's character. also he's a big bloke. Yeah, he's yeah. he's a lot I taller. Couldn't, I couldn't have seen him in this. No, and and the only reason he didn't end up doing this was because again, much much the same as when we did the Back to the Future one with, um, I've forgotten his name. What, what, Eric Stoltz? No, the other fella. Martin McFly. That's the one. Um, Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. Um, he couldn't get the time off of filming Magnum P.I. to, to do Indiana Jones. Do, do you think he, he's a bit gutted about that now, do you reckon? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Cause, I, mean, Mag- I thought Magnum was a hugely successful TV service. Mm. I loved it. I loved Magnum. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, I did, did love Magnum. I, I've got I've got a Magnum DVD somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on another time. So, this is one. Of, mm. This is a pivotal scene. It is. So we should probably actually mention this one. This. So we're in what's known as the map room. Yeah. Where we're now going to find out where the Well of Souls is. Yeah. A perfectly miniaturized mm. version. Oh, it's like a map. Yes. In three D, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But 3D in the 1980s. Now, this is where I need to bring it back to a, another game reference because in the 80s, I had an Atari system, as, as maybe a lot of people of our age would have done. No, Spectrum. On, and on the Atari, they, there was an Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark game. I could never get past the map room. I could never find my way out of the map room. That was that was as far as I ever made it in that game. And to this day, it pisses me off that I could never get, I could never <laughs> complete that game on the Atari because I couldn't get out of this fucking room. This is the first time Indy actually looks like an archaeologist. Yes, he's got a little brush and a book and a book, and he's actually made a note and read some notes. Yeah, he's actually paying attention. To what's going on around he him. is but he's kind of proving that maybe a previous theory here was a bit wrong what's the previous theory well the the germans had been down there hadn't they and they had mapped out and that's where they were digging ah. when we first came to this scene but the scene before the monkey died there was an old seer telling us that the scripture around the amulet suggested something else so Indy's put the staff in a different hole oh so he start, he's got a different starting point yeah oh uh, yeah yeah they had a different different uh, different starting point didn't they together I get it now it was so much sim- more simpler watching it as a kid you didn't have to do all this did you didn't have to think about it I do like the map room. It's a room with a big map. Hence why it's called the map room. Yeah, brilliant. It's very literal. I, I do love things to... As they are on the tin sort of thing. We do like that kind of thing. Speaking of which, we might as well say a bit about, a bit about the beer. I was going to say, we should probably talk about the beer that we're... Fi- almost finished. Yeah. So, have you been to Germany? No. Right. So obviously I have a few times. Many times. Um, Munich only the once, and this is a brilliant example of a, for me, a Munich Hells or a Munich Keller beer, which is designed to just be drunk without thinking about it so oh, much. Oh, really? Yeah. But there is actually quite a nice flavour coming through. You know, a bit malty, a bit of body. Very tasty, I think. It's very... Um very malt forward yeah I'd say but I think that's playing to its strengths mm. in, in terms of what it is oh it doesn't detract from it so that's it, it's the malt that's allowing the flavours to shine 
through this. Yep, and I suppose that, that comes a little bit from the unfiltered nature of it as well. Uh, five and a half percent. That'll do, won't it? Yeah. yeah, tastes about right. Yeah. Would have got about that. There. Yeah. Yeah. And then probably for the scene that we've just seen where they're digging in a desert, works quite well yeah. with that, doesn't it? Yeah. Marion's alive. Oh, and it's... It, oh. And Indy's found her. Yes. In amongst all those tents. And she looks quite happy about that. He's going to free her. He's not going to free her. No. He's going to leave her. Oh, oh. He's going to leave her. Oh, she's not going to be happy about that, is no. she? No. I reckon he's going to get another um, right hand at some <laughs> point, isn't he? I'll be back to get you, but I'm going to leave you here tied to a post and well, gagged. Yeah. While well, I go off and do some more. What I look for saying, which has been lost for about 3,000 years. Exploration. More to the point, how did the Germans not spot him? Well, that's always been my question about this, is you've got all these people, they're on an organised dig, and they're digging in a specific space, and you've got this one guy that's clearly looking for something yeah. else. And not local. And then you've got the scene coming up where there's loads of them digging as the yeah. sun sets. And it's you kind of like, well, did anyone ever say, well, what are that lot doing over there? Yeah. Shift finished three hours ago. Yeah. They're doing unpaid overtime. Yeah, but there's still this group of fellas digging up the sand. Oh, the Germans want to uh, show to their credentials, don't they? Yeah. They want to show their credentials. Let's torture the woman that you like, Belloc. Oh, hair flicks turned up. Oh. And he's got an exact replica of the amulet burnt into his hand. But only one half of it. Mm. Steve. The numbers left are uh, numbers four, five and six. Let's go for six. Okay, number six is Kona Fire Rock. And because, Beer Merchant said, because the staff of Ra was hot. Which was a few scenes ago, but we've just seen it used in Yes, it. it was quite close. It was very close. I mean, obviously, people listening to this, if you bought the box, you could maybe, if you wanted to do the whole scene and beer matching... You could maybe do that, but I, I think we found last time that we actually struggled to keep the beers within the times of the scenes. To be honest, we would have been out of sync by now anyway. Oh, we would have been, we would have been well behind so by now. So if this was yeah. the beer for the staff of Rye, this would have been drunk now anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so and, and here's the scene we were just talking about, where they're still digging, it's the middle of the night, and nobody's questioning why they're Everyone digging. Everyone else has gone home. Yeah. And they're still digging, and there's a storm of... Biblical proportions and building a, up. And it's a really badly special effect storm behind them it as is. well. Yeah. It is. But it's a storm like our summer at the moment, to be honest. That, that's true. Right, so uh, Kona Fire Rock. So I'm just, I'm just going to question right now, actually, because I'm just thinking about what's still to come. And I'm just wondering if at this point in the film... Or, or as we move towards the end of the film, we've still not actually heard the score, have we? We've not heard the theme tune yet. The last we? time we heard the theme tune was on the plane, wasn't it? Yeah, but we've not actually heard it in its all of its glory. No. Actually, that's a good point. I think that was a conscious decision. What, to leave it until the end? Possibly.
Right, so they've dug into another temple, which the Germans haven't found. They have, and they've just opened it. And they're kind of wondering why the floor's moving. Oh, oh. my word. It's full of snakes. Snakes? Somebody doesn't like snakes, do they? No. The full chief told us that. Right at the beginning of the film. Okay, so we have the uh, Fire Rock Pale Ale from Kona. This is a 5.8% beer. I don't think I've tried this one before. I've tried a few of the Kona beers before. I'm not sure if I've had this before, actually. Kona always appear in Hawaii Five-0. Do they? Oh, they're obviously... It's uh, the only beer that appears in Hawaii Five-0. Uh, advertising agreement there. In fact, there was an actual episode where um, a guy had a 12-pack in a case oh, see, I've stopped, and they said and I, they, I stopped watching it a couple of seasons really? back yeah why because it all just got every episode was the same yeah what's wrong with that smash car chase fight no I want a bit more from my TV nah. than that plus Michelle loves Steve McGarrett I can see that <laughs> I can see why you would yeah to be honest so there was a there was an episode where the guy had a twelve pack of cone and said, Where 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 did he get that from? And they actually tracked where you could get by a twelve pack of Kona. Brilliant. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Okay. I'm sure I could do that as well. Use untapped. <laughs> you can find out where the beer came Kona, from. Kona are still independent, aren't they? They're not they're not owned by a... uh, to be fair I've no idea, but maybe they're the dominant force on the uh, on the island. Well, well, it's it's a fairly small island, isn't it? Yeah, but highly, uh, densely populated on the uh, resorts, I imagine now. Yeah. Judging but... by the sweeping vistas they do on Hawaii Five O. Why has Balak got a dress in a box? Just in case some damsel in distress turns up, he turns wants to and... dressed up, and now he peeping Tom. He's looking in the mirror while she gets undressed. There's a lot of creep out moments in this. They're all perverts. And then he pulls out some. I don't know what he's about. Suspiciously strong bottle of white spirit, which I'm assuming say vodka. Well, and it's good that we found out that she can handle her alcohol at the beginning of the movie. That's isn't true. It? I suppose that's that leads to this bit, doesn't it? Yeah. She was, when we first saw Mary, she was drinking a numerous amount of shots in a who can fall over last game. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so Indy's going to the, uh, to find the Ark. Snakes, flames keeping them at bay. I'm okay. not sure I would have fancied filming this myself. No, no. Here's a scene. Indy's now facing a cobra. There was a sheet of glass between him and that cobra. That they hid very, very well in this scene. Brilliantly well. To stop the, the snake from actually biting him. Brilliantly well. Yeah. It might have been that this is... Is this one of the remastered? Yeah. Yeah, in the original version of the film, you can actually see the glass. Okay, so directly they've taken out all the reflection yeah, and that kind yeah. of thing. Um, so, uh, just coming back to the beer, Kona Brewing are owned by the Craft Brew Alliance. And the Craft Brew Alliance are a beer brewing company that is composed of five beer and cider brands. Which also include Red, Red Hook Owl Brewery, Widmer Brothers Brewery, Kona Brewing, A Mission Beer, and Square Mile, Square Mile Cider. So they are um, far from an independent brewery. Okay. Well, they obviously have enough muscle to get themselves posted on Hawaii Five O. Clearly. Well, if it's if it's a collective of five breweries. They must be doing quite yeah. well to be getting their products placed in the right places. Now, how good would this scene be if they were actually getting drunk rather than just appearing to get rather drunk? Rather than just drinking water. Yeah. That'd be brilliant, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. 
if you filmed that. Okay, so it, in Coronation Street, sorry, people may not have expected that, but you know Mike Baldwin always used to drink whiskey. They had to change that to apple juice. Really? Because well, because he was actually drinking Because whiskey? people were actually drinking the whiskey. Oh, okay. When they used to drink the whiskey, they changed it to apple juice because then on the screen, the colour looks exactly yeah. the same. So we're at a, what could be said a pivotal point of the film right now? We found the arc. The whole point of the You've film. just spoiled it. What do you mean? We're just, well, we're we, just about we, to say. No, th- they haven't actually found it yet, have they? They have. They've found a tomb of salt. They've found the ark. best. Come on. they found the ark. No, th- work with me here. <laughs> For God's sake. I was. That, that, they, they found the ark. Come on. We all know they found the ark. Even the first time round, you know they found the ark. Well, we know they we know they found something. We know they found the ark. Okay. All the while, Mary's just getting drunk. Oh, she's pretending to get drunk. Oh, she's getting drunk. No, she's pretending. At she's this just point. holding it very well. She's no, she's pretending. To be fair, they should get people, someone like Mary, to present this. What this podcast? Yeah, because she can hold it. That's, that's where we're <laughs> clearly struggling once again. Have you ever been that pissed where you couldn't put the pour w- your beer in or, or pour your drink into a glass? No, I don't think so. How pissed would you need to be to get I've, to that point? I've missed my mouth when I'm drinking from said glass. <laughs> I've misjudged that bit, but I don't think you'll actually miss the glass with the drink. So Marion's trying to escape now, and no. Oh dear. So how did Belloc think this evening was going to go? Yes. The Nazi standing inside the tent. Because she's essentially wearing a wedding dress as well. Yeah. Now this is quite good. This was brilliant. Because this looks like a weapon to me. No. It's just a coat hanger. I could do one of those, really. I want one of those. I really want one of those. I want one of those coat hangers which starts yeah. off as a straight line and just goes into a coat hanger. I'm still seeing hair flick, by the way. You can't unsee it once you've seen it. That's the thing. Where did those bits of wood come from? What, do you mean the perfectly formed bits of wood that they <laughs> needed to slide through the perfectly formed holes to lift this amazing golden object out of its tomb? It's very golden. What the gold does actually shine that brightly? I've never seen proper gold. I've, I've never seen pure gold, no. Oh, there's the silhouette of India again. Yep. Now, apparently, on the Ark itself, yep. you know where I'm going with this, don't you? Because you've, you've, you've read this one as well. I have read this one, and I have to admit, I've never noticed it. I haven't, but I don't think they've ever shown you it close enough to be able to actually see it. But I'm going to watch it really closely now. But R2-D2 is on the Ark. And C-3PO. Yeah, they're, they're etched into the figures on yeah. the side of the Ark, aren't so they? So some, at some point, there must be the chance to see that. Well, because otherwise, why would somebody say, oh, well, they're on it? Yeah. It's almost like it's obvious. If they actually weren't. Yeah. Maybe it'll be the scene at the end. I suppose the next time we see the arc properly is at the end, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so so now we're walking through the entire dig site where everybody's asleep. Yeah. On the floor, in the sand. Apart from this group in the distance. And it's not even the German shoulders? Shoulders? Shoulders. Shoulders. Big shoulders. Um, The German soldiers who spotted it. It was Belloc. Yeah. Who spotted people working when they were supposed to. Yeah. And also, what were the Germans thinking of? Letting people rest? How dare they? 
They were a lot more generous than I thought they were. Yeah. History paints them as complete bastards. <laughs> and Apparently uh, they weren't. Once again, it would appear that Belloc has one-upped Indy. Well, currently he has. So that's, that's two for zero. Yeah. Isn't it? What about beer then? How are you doing with it? Well, you've drunk yours a lot quicker than mine. Mate, yeah. Was I talking more? You're, you're drinking very slowly, mate. Okay. Um, it's like all the kind of beers. They're easy to drink. Really drinkable. Basically, oh, they, 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 they've designed these beers to be drunk in the sunshine, haven't they? Well, I, I think you mentioned, didn't you, that, you know, a six-pack, 12-pack on Hawaii Five-0. Yeah. You've got a 12-pack of that in your fridge. You're going to drink it when it's warm. And you're not even going to think about Which it. Which apparently Hawaii, Hawaii is yeah. quite warm a lot of the time. So and, and once again, there's a glass screen there between Marion and Cobra. Um, but yeah, it's um, oh, it's just really drinkable. It is really drinkable. Like I said, this first time I had the uh, the Fire Rock, I've had a couple of the other ones, and yeah, I'd quite happily. I mean, again, I'm always thinking when you go somewhere popular you'd end up with a load of shit but I would drink this yeah I'd quite happy pick up a 12 pack as long as it didn't incriminate me in some murder I'd be fine is is, is that what Hawaii Five O's taught you that if you buy packs of beer you're going to be incriminated well in... to be honest if you end up in Hawaii you're going to be either dead or suspected of killing someone that's true yeah there's a lot of death in Hawaii well there is on that particular series yeah but the Magnum was Hawaii as well. Yes, that's true. Actually. Yeah. And then, normally there was death in Magnum. Yeah. Not as many, not as, as spectacular. <laughs> so Sorry, I do love that scene where she burnt his ass because yeah. she thought his whip was a snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now they're having a domestic. Yep. Yeah. She so sounds like Princess Leia then. Yeah. But the snakes have got to be coming from somewhere, haven't yeah. they? I do love that his weapon of choice was a whip. Yeah. Has anyone else had a whip no. that worked so well? No, Catwoman maybe, but... Her films were far from successful. I suppose Wonder Woman in the 70s. Oh, yeah. yeah the Lasso of Truth. That. Yeah. Get in. The original Linda Carter. Which kind of came back a little bit in the new Wonder Woman. Yeah. Very briefly, though. Yeah. It wasn't used to I often. think we're going to see more of that in the, in, in the universe. In the multiverse. No. I call it the multiverse. Multiverse is Marvel. Yeah, but they've mentioned it, haven't they? Oh no, no, Marvel is DC, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone in DC knows Well, about they've the mentioned multiverse. it on the televisual series. Televisual, we're, we're separating yeah, out. Yeah. Oh. oh! Oh! We've got a little bit of tune. The music! Oh, it's, it's still not giving us the payoff of the. When, when's the first time when we get. The whole tune? The full score. Is it, is it the end? I love the way she's still got her shoe. It's not even her shoe, it's the one ballot giver. Yeah, yeah. It's another dead body. Yeah. It is like a, a fairground ride, isn't it? It is, yeah. There's like a mixture between a roller coaster and a ghost train. Yeah. This bit. Things coming out of the dark, a little bit of cold air, all that kind of thing. It all makes up the ride. So what do you reckon came first, the ride or the film? Well, he's a little film. Are you sure? Yeah. With, with this, yes, it was the film. Yeah, I'll agree with it. Because they're fit... 
what is the roller coaster? Is it Temple of Doom? I think the roller coaster. Yeah, because the roller coaster is in Temple of Doom. So yeah. It's the the mine, isn't it? So we've escaped to a a German airbase. Well, an airbase, but we've got this plane that's in a circle. Have you ever seen a plane look like that, though? No. I mean, I'm not an expert on planes. But there also doesn't seem to be a runway as such. Oh, there is no runway. But have you ever seen a plane where the the wings are out, being in mind, 1930s? Oh. And then the tips point downwards. Yeah. But I'm, I'm still intrigued as to, one, how the plane got there, and two... How it's going to take is, off. Is that, the, is that the airstrip there, behind it? No, no, that's that's a driveway. It, this, this is maybe one of the, as dramatic as this scene is, it's maybe one of the slight continuity issues yeah. in this particular film in terms of, well, how did the plane get there and, and, and how is it Because as far leaving? as I know, the only plane that could ta- take off without much of a runway... Was um, a Harrier jump jet which came out in the eighties. Yeah, which was at least <laughs> six, 50, 50, fifty years, 50 years on film. from this. Yeah, yeah. And suddenly, this film has produced a plane which takes off in nineteen thirty-six with no runway. Yeah, it's, it's like a, an early jump jet. Yeah. So we've now got Indy facing off against uh, what uh, can only be described as a big German brute. Yeah, UFC champion nineteen thirty-six before UFC was invented. Yeah. So Indy points at his shoes. Yeah. And kicks him in the balls. He's essentially trying to um, trick him. Yeah. Trying to outwit him. Yeah. Even even at this point, the first time you watched it, did you know where this scene was going he- to gonna finish? Oh, what, the propellers? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they telegraphed that one from a mile away, yeah. didn't they? But what I would say is that were you ever told when you were fighting as a kid that biting was for girls? And Indy just bit the bloke. <laughs> oh no. He can't hear Marion, you! Is, she's a fucking liability, isn't yeah. she? She's now stuck inside a plane, for God's sake. I mean, she's not been much help, to be fair. A plane that's never going to take off because there's no runway, but... She hasn't been much help. She's not been much help at all, has she? Right, so my beer's gone. Your beer's gone for a while. What numbers do we have left? Looking at the lotto, we have beers... Five and two. Let's go for two. Siren Liquid Mistress. Feels about right for now. Because Marion is epic at drinking, according to beer merchants. Well, she, she was earlier on. She's proved twice she is, but she's also proved that she's epic at getting herself in a fucking pickle. Yeah. So now she's just going to blow up a load of petroleum. Yeah. Indy, I'll leave her. Did we miss the scene where the guy... Oh, no, he's still there. No, he's still there. He hasn't... Okay. He hasn't yet. Again, another scene that has spawned many imitations of it. It's Most been... recently from what I've seen in the um, Fast and Furious version 8, or whatever it's called. I don't know if it was called version or <laughs> episode... <laughs> episode 8. Maybe, maybe, maybe I've mixed that up a little bit with... Versions of double IPAs, I don't know. Fast and Fury is V8. V8, yes. <laughs> Which would be quite appropriate would to be work. fair. Would work. Would work with that oh. film, yeah. Oh, no. Oh. No, no. Oh. Nobody likes to see that. Oh, we actually get to see blood there as well. Claret everywhere. Yeah. That was actually, well, a bloody scene. Yeah. And we're, st- we're still getting this brilliant score. Without that it quite still finishing. Still hasn't given us the full yeah. payout of that tune. <laughs> okay, so Siren Liquid Mistress is up next. While the whole. Still struggling to call it an airfield. Is the arc on that plane or not? 
No, they put the arc on a truck. Oh, that was a decoy. Yeah, and it's about to get exciting because there's there's a very exciting scene coming up actually where the truck leaves with the arc on it and Indy chases it on a horse. And I'm sure he goes through the dig site and everybody's cheering as he goes through the dig site. Yeah, it's not like they were slaves. No, we've got a look. So, the Ark is on the truck. Oh, it's being loaded onto the truck. So, while you're pouring that beer, I'm going to throw in some more facts about the film. Factoids. I've got some factoids. Um, so this film made two hundred and twelve million dollars. That was a lot of money in the eighties. Didn't it also? Wasn't also the uh, at the box office the biggest film in the uh, nineteen eighty one? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it won five Academy Awards as as well. But presuming none of the... None of the big ones. None of so, the expected big ones. No. Uh, the score was by John Williams, who also famed for... Star Wars. Star Wars. Harry Potter as well. Really? I never knew that. Here we go. So Indy's chasing after a truck on a horse and everyone's cheering. And, and obviously a combination of two of the directing greats at the time coming together. Spielberg the, and Lucas. The ultimate collaboration. Yeah, the ultimate collaboration between those guys I mean their places were in history in already again we almost had the whole tune there sorry to have <laughs> to have jumped in but they keep they keep teasing this amazing theme tune without finishing it we're almost an hour and a half into the movie and we still haven't had the whole tune I mean, we've had this beer before, so... Cheers. Cheers. Did this not recently win your beer of the month? Yeah. The cask version of it? I think so. I actually did it know... Um, I've had this on cask. I'm sure at the Brackhill Beer Festival. Oh, the Soundwave. Oh, I confused it. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever had this in any other version out of bottle. Might have had it on cake before. It's got a very um smoky. I don't know if I'd go with smoky. I'd, I'd maybe go with some like dark fruits, a little bit of pine on the nose. A little bit of um initial coppery taste, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so back to the film. Indy's now got control of the uh, of the truck. It's yep. got the arc in it, and he's trying to. I'm actually not sure what he's trying to do no, at this see, point. I never. I actually on this bit of the film, I don't know what he's trying to do. Is he trying to? Because he's got the arc. So just Mar drive away. But Mar yeah, but Marion's in the car. Ah, uh, so is it? Is so we go back. What's to, more important, Marion or the arc? So we go back to Bond. Which had been out for uh, 15 odd years by this time, almost 20. He always tries to save the girl at the same time. Complete the mission, what's, save the girl. What's more important to him? That's the thing. Well, it should have been the arc. It should have been. It should have been the arc. Because look, we're, we're now almost in a desert where he could have just gone, driven off to the right and gone. Because if Indy hadn't turned up in the pool, she would have been dead anyway. Yeah. I love these special effects now. Yeah, they're quite bad. Aren't yeah. They? yeah. It's almost cartoonish. But it's 1981. It is. To and put for, in context. And to, for its time, a lot of what we're seeing now, like there's, there's a truck driving with these fellas hanging off the side of it. If that was now, they'd probably be CGI'd. Yeah. These were actual stunt actors. 
Being thrown off a truck. Yeah, or jumping off of a truck. I reckon some of the time they were probably just still thrown off. Yeah, so it does actually, and also the quality of the live action filming versus any sort of CGI would have been a lot closer. Yeah. Every time it gets remastered and redigitized, it comes up better. The special effects probably stay the same or look worse. Yeah. Yeah, because there's some things you, you simply can't change in a film. Like this fella hanging off of the door with his legs dragging under the wheels. Yeah. And over the cliff edge. You can't. You can't suddenly change that, can you? No. And to be fair, that looked painful to me. Yeah. Where's Marion? I don't know. I was just looking she's for She's not her. in that car. So where is she? Is she in the box with the Ark? He looks like Paul Hogan. Yes, he does. <laughs> Sorry, he looks like Crocodile no, Dundee. No, he, he actually does. <laughs> If it just said, this is a knife. <laughs> Mercedes Benz. It's a good job that was a Mercedes though, isn't it? Yeah. Otherwise you would have had nothing to hold, <laughs> hold on to. Mercedes Benz. Yeah. Product placement in this film, shit. There's hardly any. But there wouldn't have been in the 40s, would there? Oh, the 30s, 40s. No, but you still would have thought they would have found some way. Well, they have. Mercedes. I mean, they found fucking furry things in Return of the Giant. <laughs> so where is Marion? Oh, this is this is brilliant. Isn't isn't Marion? Yes. Come on. A cl- another classic. Indy's scene. under the truck, and he's managed to hang on all the way through, and he's used the whip again. He has. I remember watching the making of Raiders of the Lost Ark, and how they did that this scene because he's on a board. That that moment where he's going under the yeah. and he's he's on a basically a wooden board, he's laid on a board or or the stunt actor is. That's like speed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and th- they but they hid that well. You couldn't see it there, no. could you? Um, yeah. So I think Marion's still back at the dig site with Indy's mate, whose name we can't seem to remember. Salah. Okay. Is, is that him? Right, so why isn't he just ramming? why isn't he just driving off with the ark yeah because look in the car there's the car's full of Germans and why, why run them off the road even possibly a French stroke maybe Belgian guy they're, see they're not happy about being run off the road either look Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah, and now so he's back. now yeah. gone back to the centre of Cairo. That scene's been used loads of times, where he just drives through. Yeah, a, they've uh, used that in Bond as well. Yeah, they've used that in Bond many times, and they've used it in Doctor Who as well. Yeah. There you go. You buy some melons. Sunlight soap. Yeah, advertised in the background, which would have been around in the thirties. Uh, time for a party. It's too early for a party. It's always too early for a party. Too early for... If it's a party's been shown, it's too early. Yep. Never trust a ship's captain. Mr. Katanga. Yeah. Don't all sound like living at die. That's, that's, Mr. It, Kananga. Is it not the same actor as well? I've thought about that many a time, but I'm not sure I see him enough to judge. But I did see Living That Die last night, so... So it should be fairly fresh in your mind. Yeah, I'm going to watch. Yeah. If he says he's Mr. Big at any point... That's it, that's that's done for you, yeah. He's done, he's it. It's sorted. Why is he getting on a ship? Because they're taking the Ark... Somewhere. Because it's the 30s and they didn't have planes readily available. Okay, but why not put the ark just in a wooden box and not go on the same boat? Well... A hmm. bit like the royal family. It's questionable, isn't it? 
The royal yeah. family don't all travel together because there's an operational risk to it. Was operational risk not a thing then? Well... Oh, the Empire. <laughs> yep, you've got to throw that in there, haven't you? So Indy is safe now. So before this scene started, which, yep. and this is quite, for me, this is one of the scenes in the movie coming up, so I'm going to probably lose my shit in a minute. You, you're looking forward to this bit, I, I am. Um you started talking about something which neither of us can now remember what you were you, you had mentioned I still can't remember to be honest yeah so but I do love this scene where <laughs> well where Indy gets hit by the mirror Indy's looking at all of his aches and pains and she keeps <laughs> flipping the mirror over and smacking him with it um so Siren's liquid mistress thoughts I like Siren I love some of their beers, but this is not one of my favourites. Is that... It's, this is, it's, this a, is, it's, is, a, it's is a red that, IPA, isn't it? This is a rye, isn't it? This has got rye. I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. It's a red IPA, which I probably should have said earlier, to be fair. Um, it's got loads of shit on the background, which I can't read on this bottle. Uh, 5.8%. For me, it's... As soon as we go red on beers, I'm not. It doesn't quite tick. I'm for not me. a fan of red beers. No, I, I don't. Either of us are a fan of red beers. Red, are we? red ale, red ipe. Oh, all of it. Oh, red hold rice. on a second. This is one of the awkward scenes when you're watching this film with a kid. It's almost they, they're kissing. They are, but no. It's only showing her where it hurts, and she's kissing those spots. Yeah. So many things to too, say at that too point. Many things, yeah. Too many things to say at that point. And he falls asleep. And he falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> brilliant. Oh, come on. Appreciate what he's just done for the world. Sure, that was worth a little bit of a slap, though. Yeah. Bearing in mind, she punched him earlier. She did punch him earlier, yeah. So we've got um, we've got two beers left. Yeah, so so again by the lotto system. There's only there's only one to go. There is only one to go. So it's the uh, vibrant forest kaleidoscope, which apparently is an amazing new British beer. No, we we must have two to go then. Have we? So where did I put the vibrant forest? Vibrant forest is a can. Oh. And I know it's a can because I, I have to say this publicly right now. I knew I'd got the numbers wrong somewhere. This, th this can, when it first arrived, I put it in my fridge and it fell out while the fridge was still open. And it hit my floor and it redecorated oh. my kitchen. And, and brilliantly, case, Johnny from Beer Merchant sent us another can of it. In that case, Johnny's a, a really good guy. And obviously the lotto still exists, but... In that case, we've got three beers to go. So, so we best drink the uh, the vibrant forest quickly. As I've named it. During what I think is the best scene of the film. So why is this the best scene? Of the scene? I, I don't know. There's there's so much going on in this scene for me. There was the you had the brief payoff that they were escaping with the ark, and then suddenly the ship was stopped, and nobody knew how the ship was stopped, and then all of a sudden you saw that it was stopped by a U boat. Yeah, how did ship stop well, well the u-boat stopped it and then the germans are once again stealing the ark but somehow india's made it out of the crowd how has he made it out of the crowd though i don't know because he's in one of those um funnels what can only be described as those comedy funnels that in many cartoons you would have seen Tom or Jerry walking around in. <laughs> That's a good analogy. That yeah, one. and right now in this scene, he's his head is popping up in this funnel behind the main characters. And no one can see it. No. 
So then there's this, there's this awkward payoff between the captain of the ship, who we still suspect might be from a future Bond movie. No, 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 not a future Bond movie. Past Bond movie? Live and let die was eight years before this. Really? Yeah. That's why I don't think it is Kananga. Oh, because he looks younger. Yeah. So this is like Kananga's son or something. But that's just who he reminded me of when I first saw him. Yep. There you go. So Cheers. Thank this you. This is the bit which I'd forgotten about. So Kaleidoscope, the vibrant forest brewery, India Pale Ale. Which made my kitchen smell amazing when I dropped it. Well, I'm not surprised. It's six and a half percent yeah. alcohol there, mate. Here we, here it is. Here's the scene for me. So they've searched the whole of the ship. They've looked around the ship, but he's not there. He's on the U-boat. How the hell did he get on the U-boat? I don't from there? care. I mean, it's open water. I do not care. Because at the age of 10 or whatever it was, was when I first saw this, it was... And it's the first time you get in the full tune as well. Yeah. I mean, it's a proper indie moment. You know, all of a sudden... If you didn't know before this point, right now you know he's the hero. Yeah. I um, have always questioned how he got into a submarine, though. And we have the map again. Without dying. Yeah, but the submarine was above water. Yeah, but at some point, the length that they've gone on that map, they must have submerged True. again. So, did he get into the submarine? I mean, to be fair, oh, that looks like a Bond layer. <laughs> it looks like a Thunderbird moment. Oh, no, Bond. You only live twice. And that's almost the biggest Nazi flag you're ever going to see. Yeah. What do you think of the kaleidoscope? Oh, I haven't tasted it. I was, I was just listening to you there. Okay. It smells fruity. It's, um... Bitter as anything. It's like got a properly bitter finish to it. Yeah, but don't we ask for that? I love a bit of finish, yeah. don't get me wrong. Very dry in the uh, lips and the tongue it's as well. It's a dry bit of finish. Some light tropical fruits going on in there. I mean, it's got a very fruity nose. There's no denying the fruity nose. Fruity nose, and it's... it's. Are we going murky or hazy? I would say hazy. Mm. But is it a is it a can conditions can? Yeah. Okay, I love this scene because I question he's Indy's trying to put on a German soldier's uniform right now. That's clearly too short, too small for him. And I'm just wondering if this is kind of harking back to the scene in Star Wars where he's dressed as a stormtrooper. Why? Because I thought it was Luke, but called was too short. It, it was, but do you think the, the reference there is that I'm putting mm. a uniform on that's Could too be. short? I just thought it was odd, but bearing in mind he was on a German U-boat, the uniform was too small. Because it would fit, wouldn't it? It was Aryan race. Yeah. He'd be too small for the uniform rather yeah. than the other way around. But on the upside, the Germans have the Ark safely. They do, but for the first time, I feel like that German officer is a bit pissed off with the whole thing. Yeah. He's thinking, why? Yeah. What's the whole point of this? Has no one noticed that Indy's not very Germanic? I don't think so, no. Not at this point. Oh. How did we go from an underground base to the middle of the desert? Underground base in the water. Yeah. To the desert. No in between. No. And Marion's wearing a night dress. She wears a lot of what look like wedding dresses. Yeah. And in case you didn't realise they were Germans. They've got Nazi flags yes, at the front of the back of the parade. So, Marion doesn't reappear in any of the sequels, does she? 
Uh, not till the most recent, the Kingdom Skull. Which was episode like, number four. Number four, it? so 2008. They did a bit of a. It wasn't so it's much a reboot. Fairly recent. Um, but it's one where they had Shia LaBeouf in it. Okay. And isn't there an, uh, there's an Indy 5 coming as well, isn't there? Yep. Yep, there is supposed to be an Indy 5 coming up. Not sure how that's going to play because the whole point of Indy 4 was that Shane LaBeouf was supposed to take over Indy's uh, mantle. But it never happened. No. And sometimes you should just leave well alone. Yeah. Don't you think? Out of the three, what was your favourite? I actually think this one. See, my, I think you need to watch all three in close order. My favourite is the third one. There's there's a lot in the third one that I love. Yeah. I, I, I think the third one has got some real brilliant Sean Connery moments in it. And I, I do love the whole final scenes where he's going through the various trials and they have to get to all these cups yeah. and he has to choose which one is the right cup and all the rest of it. But I think in terms of what is is most true about this trilogy is is the character that you see in this first yeah. film, which is the archaeologist stroke, adventurer, explorer, yeah. teacher, professor, Indiana Jones. This is him in this yeah. film. And on that point, this scene lends quite nicely to that because Balak has just challenged him to shoot the Ark. And he can't do it. No. Even to save Marion, essentially. Yeah. He can't do it. Because it's such an important historical item. Yeah. It's like someone throwing a, a Ming vase at you. Yeah. And you'll do everything you can to catch it. He's basically done exactly the same thing there. He will not let that happen. Yeah. So now we've gone from that into this kind of weird evening ritual where Belloc is now dressed up as some high priest. But where did he get the outfit from? Did he have that with the wedding dress? Yeah. I mean, has he got Who some knows? weird... I mean, look. It just does all get a bit weird at this, this point. Bit just sort of, again... This, 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 this scene's out of... Out of sync with the rest of the film, yeah. isn't it? The scenes just happen, and they've suddenly brought a whole load of like TV cameras with them as well. So, having missed out this beer originally from this, okay. Well, I, no, I actually love that beer, by the way. In, imminently quaffable. Yeah. Bitterness. What was this? Six point. Six point five. Six point five. All the bitter. All the fruit juice. So for me, the kaleidoscope ticked a lot of beers there. Yeah. Oh, there's the sonic screwdriver. Indeed, there it is. So, we've, we've lifted the lid off the ark, and all that's in there is sand. Yeah, so Sorry. that's a bit shit, really. But at the beginning of the film, didn't Indy say that it was the remnants of the Ten Commandments? Yeah. And the Ten Commandments were stones. So, is it is it not possible it would just be sta- sand? Oh, it's all gone to shit, mate. So here we go with the uh, the Red Hook IPA. So this is the Long Hammer IPA, dry hopped India Pale Ale, brewed by Red Hook, Hook Brewery in Seattle, Washington. Okay, nice. So cheers. So what should be a West Coast IPA then? It should be. It's in clear. terms of location, description, look. Stay far, so good. Let's get in. See, the problem with this scene is that it actually looks like a film set now. Yeah. Because I've got the camera set up to record the opening of the art, it actually looks like a film scene. And... I just don't think I ever really bought this scene. No. Because I could understand why these spirits would come out and attack the aggressors, as in those that opened 
the Ark, but why would they attack the innocent bystanders? Mm. To be fair, were they any of them innocent bystanders apart from India Mary though? Well, the soldiers were only doing what they were told. Oh, that's been an argument held through history. It, it has, but... So they've done nothing, have they? I would have taken them out as well. Mm. And it's, we've now got the classic face melting scenes. Here we go. Look at that. Which, to be fair, for its time... Was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. But how... How did they escape simply by closing their eyes? Oh, that's very good. No idea. But Indy knew not to look. Yeah, but... So you closed your eyes? I love the way the lids fall on top. Yeah. <laughs> and we've, but we've still not got a good enough look at it to see... See for your 3 po and R2-D2? No. So how have other people spotted it? I, I have no idea. Have they gone through the film frame, frame by frame? Maybe. Who but knows? It's a really boring way to watch a film. But... It's... That music... It's a little bit Star Wars. That's isn't very it? Star yeah. Wars. Come on, that's yeah. so Star Wars. Oops, we're almost out of film, mate, <laughs> and we've still got a beer to go. <laughs> So back in Washington, Professor Jones is back. Yeah. Um, we're essentially trying to find out what's happened yeah. to the Ark. The Ark of the Covenant, one of the most historically important items ever. Yeah. Not the last time we see it in all the indie films, though. Really? It does make a very brief cameo appearance in the Kingdom of the Lost Skull. Does it? Very brief appearance. One of the boxes, there's a bit of a fight in the base, and that box gets lit, and you very briefly see the arc. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah. See, that's brilliant. And Harrison Ford is really young in this film. Yes. As we've just seen in that scene. Star Wars. Star Wars music again. It's the yeah. same bloody music. Yeah. Essentially, apart from maybe a couple of chords. Oh. And the arc's being put away. Yep. Locked up. I'm sure that number probably means something on yeah. that box, doesn't it? It's probably like someone's phone number. Yeah. But yeah, this whole um, this scene right now, the end, the warehouse where the ark gets put away. It's an, it's amazing though, isn't it? Yeah, but it appears in the last in yeah. the Kingdom of the Lost Skull. Finally, we get the music. You get the music. You get the payoff that they've been promising you through the whole film. See, also, I think these. Films need to be watched quite close order. So literally one after the other. Yeah. Yeah. So you get the whole feel of a trilogy because in the next film, I love that title, Associate to Mr. Spielberg. <laughs> I would have, I would have, I would have loved to have been that person. <laughs> yeah. I'm associate to Mr. Spielberg um, because at Temple of Doom it starts straight in the action. He's yeah. never in Temple of Doom. He's never Professor Jones. No, he isn't, is he? No. All the way through, he's the adventurer. Yeah. Starts off in a uh, in Asia. It's like Singapore, isn't yeah. it? The, they're in or something? Yeah, so yeah. In a yeah. nightclub, basically. He's the adventurer the whole way through. He's never the professor. So it's like, this is like, giving you the character, we know who but he is. But then they come, they come round to Last, Last Crusade, Crusade, where he becomes fresher again. Yeah, so, and that brings us back to the whole 
trilogy yeah. discussion. Or... So does that mean this film started as a trilogy? Had they planned a No, trilogy? I don't think it did. Again, I think this was based on the success of the first film. I think they then decided to make a sequel. And personally, I don't think it was Temple of Doom was... I, I think it was terrible as, as a movie. I agree. I think... I think I prefer me and Michael watched it a couple of weeks ago and Michael actually preferred Temple of Doom but I think largely that's because it went straight into the action it's, it's, it, Temple of Doom is an action all the way through yeah. but I don't think it's as full a film as this one is and it has Pat Roach in it the classic UK wrestler <laughs> <laughs> brilliant I didn't even you know, you know the, scene, the scene at the end you know where uh, he's on the conveyor belt with all the stones and the big guy jumps is that on. Pat Roach that's Pat Roach Really? Of wrestling fame, yeah. Oh, superb. Hadn't picked that up. Brilliant, thank you, Steve. Well, there you go. Um, but, but then... But you, then you, Last Crusade marries both Last films together. Last Crusade is brilliant. Yeah. And Sean Connery, obviously, is in it. Yeah. But it just adds... You could... I suppose as a trilogy, you could, you, you could take Temple of Doom out of it and you could go from the end of this to Last Crusade yeah. and they would work yes. together because you, you, you'd get... You get Indy's backstory, you, you understand why he is how he is, and then you've got his dad, yes. who's this bumbling character all the way through it, who knows stuff, but trips his way through it. Yeah. And it's just brilliant. Uh, Kingdom of the Lost Skull tried to do, make it a, um, bring it up to date, and throw a bit more action in between. I've kind of largely ignored that as never happening. Is that your way of pretend? Yeah. So a bit like the Justice League coming up. Yeah. It's not there's no Batman, hand. there's Wonder Woman, and only two others. Yeah, there's no Flash in it. <laughs> there just isn't. There's no Flash, right. Yeah. The credits are still going. Unlike a Marvel film, there's going to be no post-credit. No, no, because there were no post-credits in the 80s. Uh, and we've still got one more beer to do, so... Which I am going to get. Why don't we do... We'll, we'll do the final beer. We'll do some final thoughts on the film. Yeah. The franchise. And then we can talk about what we're going to do on the um, next opinions on films. Oh! Which we've got an absolute cracker lined up, haven't we? Oh, I like the word. You use cracker there. Oh, it's, I didn't even think about that. So... What's the final beer that we've got now? Okay, so the last beer is Keys, Brewery Keys, the Barrel Project 09 2016, Imperial Stout Aged on Gerben Barrels. I have no idea what a Gerben Barrel is. Uh, it's 11% and it's dark, which is why we didn't include this in the lottery. Yeah, because this could have come out number one. If this had come out number one, we would have been fucked for the entire film. Yeah. Now, as, as the film is still playing... Yes. So, I'll just top up your glass there, Steve. And we are still drinking the beer. Shall I put one of the uh, special features? You can do. Because this is, this is a, new, a new thing for, the, uh, for us. Just, yeah, just because we've run out of film time for beers. Yeah, but also, I've, I don't actually watch the special features very often. I very rarely watch the special features. So we've got the uh, Raiders of Sock, an introduction, Indiana Jones and appreciation, appreciation, Melting Face, Storyboards, The Well of Souls. I'm gonna have a little look at this okay. one. Okay. So, what are you getting from the beer on the nose? There's sherry. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm getting sherry. Which is why I'm pulling a bit of a suspect face. I'm getting some, I'm getting some dark oh, chocolate, some dark God. fruit. On the nose. Maybe that's the barrel it was aged in. Maybe it's a sherry barrel. Let's um, get into this one. Cheers. Cheers. Oh god, that's smooth though. That's a lot better flavour than it does smell. I mean, See, if you don't like, if you don't like sherry, which I don't. You're going to struggle with this one. Really? Yeah. It's all sherry for me. Oh, I'm not even getting that. Probably because I don't know sherry, but... So... No, but sherry's one of those very few alcoholic drinks where they go... Ah! So, the, the last time we did opinions on films, we did 
uh, a poll at the end of it where yep. we were asking people to select the films. Obviously, folks that listen and those on Twitter selected Raiders of the Lost Ark for us this time. There were two other films on that list as well, which were Lost Boys and Flash Gordon, yep. which we will get to. Yeah. But the next time we do one of these films is going to be around Christmas. So we thought we would maybe do the ultimate 80s Christmas movie, which is... I would, a, I would say the ultimate Christmas movie. Okay, so the ultimate Christmas movie, which is, of course... Die Hard. Absolutely. What is more Christmas than a guy who's balding with a vest climbing through venting pipes? While he's chauffeur waits in the basement with a great big teddy bear yeah and the and there's Christmas songs it's it's Chris, and so, so that's what we're going to do next time it's we're, Die Hard we are going to do Die Hard we will get to the Lost Boys and Flash Gordon but we, yep. we just took a little bit of poetic license in terms of inserting Die Hard into this series it is the ultimate Christmas film. It is the ultimate Christmas film. And, and we are, we gonna are gonna gonna have a lot of fun drinking along to Die Hard, I think, aren't we? I don't think I've drunk a beer to Die Hard before. I don't think I've drunk a beer to Raiders of the Lost Ark before. Okay, true. But I am looking forward to... Actually, j- sorry. I'm... Just to say, these uh, special features thing, these drawings are brilliant. But they... That, well, that's what storyboards do, isn't it? They set out what the scene should look like. Yeah. They are brilliant. Um, right. Indiana looks very feminine in that picture. Yeah. So, uh, I reckon we're probably done. I think we're probably done. For this show, aren't we? Yeah. This beer isn't for me, I'll be honest. Oh, I mean, I'm loving it. I the, I can't, I, I can't get past the... Um, you, you, sherry you aroma. Hung up on the sherry. Yeah. Oh, that's going down really easy. That. However, it is time to close out. It is, um, Steve. I've loved it. It's been, it's been great. Cheers. Cheers.